Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at how to use the wedge tool. The wedge tool is super powerful, but it's also kind of tricky to use. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's look at uh, the most basic uh, use of the wedge tool and what it does. Uh, like I said, it is super handy and can speed up a lot of your workflow. Um, so I just have a basic cube here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and then go to multi-select. And in multi-select, I can select edges, faces, verts, all at the same time. So what you want to do is you want to select a face, and then you also want to select an edge by holding shift and then clicking the edge. So I have a face and an edge selected. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and hold down right click to get the uh, marking menu to appear. And I'm just going to enter the wedge tool. And boom, just like that. So you click it, and it takes the face and extrudes it and wedges it down to the bottom edge that you had selected uh, in an arc like this. And then you can just uh, tweak the angle if you uh, want to have multiple divisions, however many that you like. And of course, that works on any edge. So I'm just going to hit undo here and then go again here, holding down right click, uh, going to multi, and same face. But uh, this time, I'll choose this edge instead and then wedge and same thing you can adjust the divisions and it wedges it in whatever direction that you want to get to the wedge tool from the default menu it is under edit mesh and then just go down to wedge right there so we've wedged our uh, faces there but the thing that's kind of lame about this is you often don't want it to pinch here in a single point that's like if you were building an air duct right they've got these kind of right angle curved corners, but an air duct doesn't pinch to like one edge there. So for example, I'm just going to extrude this ed uh, this face here. And so like if I was building an air vent, well, that kind of sucks. I actually want a little bit of curve in there too, right? I don't want like just a hard right angle edge there. It's uh, not realistic. So to do that, let me just undo this crap that I just did here. Okay, so we're back to a cube. And what I'll do to do that is I'll model myself a little 3D jig. And what I mean by that is I'm going to model a cylinder here. And I'm going to use it to actually uh, determine where the wedge goes. So the really cool thing about this tool is that you can select a face on one object and an edge on a secondary object. So let me just hit T there and then put 16 in there. OK, so now I need, so I want to go from this face, and then I want to kind of go extrude it down like that. So we need to move the cylinder into the right spot. So let me just, um, oops, actually I should have just gone in here and um, set this to one, just so we can see what's happening uh, more easily with the jig. So I'm just going to center the pivot, and then I'm going to snap it up here. And then I'm going to snap, constrain snap that to this um, plane. And then I'm going to snap it there. So now we have our actual like little jig. So, you know, we can scale it from this point And we can assume if we're going to go from that edge to that face that it's going to follow this curved trajectory. So I believe we will just need to grab these guys and snap them. So the edges are the same size as the box. And let's try it out. So select both the box and the jig that we made. And then again, hold down right click and select multi and then grab the face and then grab the edge and then do the wedge and go minus 90 this time. And what the fuck? What is going on here? This is not looking good. This is not what I wanted. It's doing some wacky shit here instead of wrapping around to that edge. And that is because the wedge tool doesn't work on like curvy surfaces or whatever, but there's a workaround luckily. So we'll show you how to deal with this. So I'm just going to hit undo to get rid of that. Don't need that stuff. Don't need that selected either. Whoops. There we go. Um, so basically, we want it to follow this. So we know this is the flat plane that we want to get down to, but like a box going to a curvy shape doesn't work with the wedge tool. So We've used this to determine the circumference, basically, of where we want the curve to go. So what you can do now is you can actually just select the face on the box and extrude it down and snap it to that same plane that we care about. And then from there, we can go multi, face, 
edge in there, and then wedge. And then again, I don't know why it's going in reverse, but it doesn't matter. You can just go minus. And then boom, we've got our perfect wedge. See, it actually lines up perfectly with the cylinder. So first you use the cylinder to determine how big you want the curvature to be. Basically a 3D jig, you kind of trace it out and then you can use this secondary box based on the jig to get the perfect wedge that you want. There you go, change the um, divisions. And then let's look at another uh, super time saving one, which is like wedging a pipe, right? Because you might have to put like a right angle elbow uh, in a pipe that you're modeling, maybe for a plumbing pipe or something like that. So let me just get the pivot of this guy. So same thing, we're gonna use this as the jig. We're gonna snap it to here. And then we're actually, let's just center this up. I'm just gonna quickly go into the multi-cut tool and then uh, control plus middle mouse click to add a, loop right in the center and snap that over. And you might think that this would work because it's a cylinder. Whoops, that's not actually lined up. What did I do there? There we go. Uh, you might think that this will actually work because it's a cylinder to a cylinder. So let's just try that out. Go here, right click, multi, whoops. What's going on here? Multi face and let's go that. And then let's wedge and same thing. It's all wonky and it didn't work for whatever reason. So it's actually the same trick on a curved shape as well. Let's just undo that. So you use this to determine the circumference, our little 3D jig here. And let's say I want to go with like a tighter one or like maybe a wider one here. We'll just do them both just for fun. So all you're really using this for is to determine the number of uh, the, the kind of the size of the curvature that you want to extrude the pipe to. So what you need to do here is the same thing. You need to select these faces here and then do an extrude down. Snap that guy to there. Go back into here. I'm just going to go into this and then multi face on the same object. And then I don't know why it won't get that edge. There we go. Edge, edge and then do a wedge and boom, there you go. You've got your perfect um, cylindrical pipe extruded exactly on the number of uh, segments of this guy here. And you can always go and make it smoother if you want to. So then let's just hit undo. And then if we wanted to change the size of this guy, like maybe I didn't want it to go that far. I just wanted like a really tight like corner. So you scale this guy down because in the side view here, oops, is that still snapped up? Yeah, it is. So in the side view here, it's going to go into wireframe. And is it snapped up? Yeah, it's snapped up. We're using this guy. It's kind of weird. It doesn't look like it's snapped up there. We're using this guy to determine like how big that this is going to extrude along the edge. So if we want it to be smaller, we'll just scale this guy smaller, really tight one there. And then again, we'll adjust the bottom plane of this to be the bottom plane of that. Oops, the center of that, sorry, not the bottom plane. And then again, quickly go into here and then let's go uh, multi select and then grab these two edges here. And then shift right click, hold, and then go wedge. And then so same thing. See, we can use this circle that we made here as a 3D jig to determine where the wedge is actually going to happen. So super powerful. We could even do something crazy like this too. We could grab this guy here and just move him over here. Hold down C and middle mouse drag to whoops to snap that along the curve and just drag it down there. And let's just move the pivot here and constrain snap that to that edge and that edge. And let's try this out as well. So again, grab these faces here. Just gonna hold down shift and drag out to extrude. And then I'm just gonna hold down V and drag along uh, red to constrain snap. And same thing as before, enter the multi um, selection, grab these edges, oops, grab it. And then go in, wedge it and boom, you 
got a perfect wedge, exactly what you were expecting to happen. And then I'm just going to isolate selection here. And then you just have to go and clean up these little other like jigs that you've made. And it's pretty easy to do. There's multiple ways that you can do that. I'm just going to grab those guys and just uh, expand my selection and then just delete them. And then I'm just going to select that edge and hold shift right click and go to the fill hole. And then um, you could use here, we'll just use the multi cut tool to get these. You could also use the connection tool there and then, you know, just clean that up um, however you want to do it. The wedge tool is super handy. Uh, when I started using Maya in the beginning, this tool did not exist and you had to fucking hand model all that shit and it was awful. Try hand modeling this. It's so painful. Like you have to, oh, it's just, it's, it's terrible. Like there's no way I would ever want to hand model this. It's, it's disgusting. So just wedge it and enjoy your day. Here's another trick that you can do. If you don't want to do the cleanup afterwards on your initial model, you can actually just build the jig as a separate model, that little extrusion that we were doing, and snap it into place. And like I said, it works on multiple objects. So you can go face and edge and wedge, minus 90. And then when you're done, uh, this object uh, just goes away. So you can actually just uh, go and reuse it again on another part of it. If you like this video and want to see more game art tips and tricks, please click the subscribe button. As usual, any links will be in the description. If you've got any questions, post them in the comments area. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a magnificent day.